competition in the battery electric van space is heating up. And electric vans, like EVs in general, can have many benefits. But does that mean an electric van is right for your business? Here, we're putting LDV's eDeliver 7 alongside the Toyota Hiace and the Hyundai Staria Load to see how the electric upstart stacks up against the two diesel-powered big hitters of the medium van category. But before we do, don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know what you think about potentially switching to an electric van in the comments below. Right, let's get into it. Now this isn't a direct head-to-head -head comparison, as here we have the flagship LDV eDeliver 7 in a long wheelbase high roof format with 88 kilowatt hour battery, alongside a fleet spec Toyota Hiace with barn door option and Hyundai's premium grade Staria Load with prestige paint. And so while the LDV has a mid 60K starting price, this particular variant actually commands a significant premium over both the Toyota and the Hyundai. But the sticker price is just one aspect of a commercial vehicle's total cost of ownership, so let's dig a little deeper. The LDV and the Toyota are an even match for factory warranty for commercial use, with both adding an extra 30,000 kilometres over the Hyundai. However, the LDV is streets ahead of both when it comes to service intervals and ongoing servicing costs. In fact, with each manufacturer's cap price servicing scheme, you'll pay significantly less to keep the LDV in fine fettle over the first 90,000 kilometres. And over that 90,000 kilometres, the LDV will require just three services, compared to seven for the Hyundai and nine for the Toyota. The fact is, battery electric vehicles have far fewer moving parts and require less maintenance, and that will only help your bottom line in terms of dollars and uptime. Each of the four LDV variants on offer has full LED lighting, front and rear fog lights, a single sliding side door, and 50-50 barn doors at the rear. The Toyota, meanwhile, is the shortest of the two wheelbases on offer, and this barn door variant only became available recently. It also has standard headlights, not LED, but you do get twin sliding side doors as standard. Our Hyundai also comes standard with dual sliding side doors, while our premium spec test vehicle sports a powered rear liftback, a rear fog light, LED lighting, 17-inch alloys, and moonlight blue premium paint. And while there's not actually much to see here under the bonnet, it is of course the engine and drive line that sets this LDV apart. And while on paper at least, it's 20 kilowatts ahead of its diesel counterparts, it does fall behind on torque. It has a front mounted electric motor driving the front wheels via a single speed transmission. And here it's hooked up to LDV's long range 88 kilowatt hour battery. A 77 kilowatt hour battery is also available. Our two rivals sport typical four-cylinder turbo diesels, with the Toyota's 2.8-litre unit driving the rear wheels via a six-speed auto, and the Hyundai's 2.2-litre oiler driving the front wheels via an eight-speed auto. There's no A-pillar grab handle to help you up into the LDV, but once you're behind the wheel, the cab offers a pleasing mix of utilitarian durability and driver comfort and convenience features. There's no digital speedo, but it does have the largest touchscreen multimedia unit of the three. The hard plastics are softened with different tones and textures, piano black and silver trim, and there's a soft touch finish on the door sills. It's manual adjustment for the driver's seat, which is the highest of the three and requires a bit of a step up. And the steering wheel is only adjustable for tilt, not reach, although we appreciate the adjustable armrest. There are several storage options, including cubbies for smartphones near each of the two USB-A charge points, but no wireless charging. And there's more room under the seating, where you'll also find a Type 2 AC charge cable. Despite the large infotainment touchscreen and the central digi instrument display, there aren't actually masses of functions available. The battery charge indicator is quite small, but all the essential information is there and it's all easy enough to access. We like the electronic park brake, the steering wheel and seat heating, and the keyless entry and push button starting. There's also wired Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but no integrated sat-nav. And parking is easy thanks to front and rear parking sensors and a crisp reversing camera display with predictive guides, although there's no 360 degree view. 
This latest Hi Ace generation may already be five years old, but it ticks most of the boxes for an LCV and it's a proven and dependable entity. All the plastics fit together nicely and it's a very easy dash to navigate. The cab is capped off with a leather accented multifunction steering wheel and we like the electric lumbar support in the driver's seat, along with the overhead and A-pillar grab handles that aid entry on both sides of the cab. The Toyota's cab storage would be relatively modest were it not for the handy centre console unit. Although while there are a couple of trays, there's no dedicated spot for a smartphone and no wireless charging. There's no concealed dash top storage either, but the compact glove box is lockable. Compared to the LDV and the Hyundai, the tech in the Toyota is starting to look a little dated. The touchscreen is more compact and the resolution isn't quite as crisp as in the others, but it's all easy enough to use, while starting is via an old school keyed ignition. There's wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but there's only the one USB-A port, although it is complemented by two 12 volt sockets. But the reversing camera display is relatively small and low res by today's standards, and it only has fixed rather than predictive guides. The Hyundai's cab is lower and it's easier to slide into. You sit more in this cab than up high like you do in the LDV and to a slightly lesser extent, the Toyota. Inside, there's an expanse of dark plastics, but the large infotainment screen and the fully digital instrumentation lend it a thoroughly modern feel. Everything fits together nicely and this two-seater perhaps feels a little more spacious because it doesn't have a centre console like the Toyota or seating for three like the LDV. The Hyundai has overhead shelves and two small concealed dash top trays in addition to its glove box. And the triple deck door pockets are useful too. And you can always store more gear between the seating. The Hyundai's touchscreen is smaller than the LDV's but it's bigger than the Toyota's and it's a sharp display. Add in the full digital instrumentation and this cab looks bang up to date. It also has wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto along with integrated SatNav. It's the only van to have wireless smartphone charging and, like the LDV, it has keyless entry and push button starting. Reversing is a breeze thanks to the sensors, 360 degree view and the super crisp display. And we like this premium van's blind spot view monitor too, which shows a camera view down the side of the van when turning or changing lanes. All three of these vans are comfy mobile offices but we're giving the Hyundai a slight edge here over the LDV with the Toyota close behind. Both the LDV and the Hyundai lean more towards car-like refinement and features, while the Toyota is perhaps just a little more utilitarian, but highly functional nonetheless. All three fare well for safety features, although the LDV hasn't been assessed by ANCAP and the others scored their five-star ANCAP rating some years back, in 2019 for the Toyota and 2021 for the Hyundai. But it's the Hyundai that ticks the most boxes for its modern active safety systems, with the Toyota lacking items like adaptive cruise control and, like with the LDV, a 360 degree camera. But the LDV has a long list of safety features too, and LDV Australia says it's seeking to have ANCAP assess the van in the not too distant future. Our long wheelbase high roof LDV has a load volume of 8.7 cubic metres. As mentioned, it comes with barn doors at the rear, but just the one sliding side door. And it actually has the highest load floor height of the Trio at 670 millimetres. We've loaded all three of our test vans up with a 325 kilo test weight, which will remain in place for the duration of this three day review. There's no bulkhead, but it comes with a synthetic floor liner and mid height wall protection as well as a bright LED light and eight sturdy and recessed tie-down anchor points. The Toyota's load bay is another basic Spartan affair, but as with the LDV, the rear barn doors make forklift loading easy. The load floor height is mid-pack here at 640 millimetres, and we should point out that all three of these vans will happily accept a standard Aussie pallet between their wheel arches. It's a bare steel floor, but you do get mid-height wall protection, a couple of standard lights, six small tie down points and nice low side steps, but no bulkhead. The mesh cargo barrier in the Hyundai isn't standard either, but the load bay floor liner is, and you get eight chunky tie down anchor points, along with dual sliding side doors, and in this premium variant, a powered liftback tailgate. The liftback requires more clearance, but there's a smart remote opening and closing feature, while the load floor height is the lowest of the trio at 600 millimeters. 
And while we're not tackling any towing in this review, we can tell you the Hyundai has a claimed 2,500 kilo braked towing limit versus 1,500 kilos for the LDV and the Toyota. Although the LDV does have the lowest gross combined mass limit of the trio. But that's enough of the details. Let's jump behind the wheel and see how these workhorses actually drive. This LDV just feels really smart for a commercial vehicle. The cab is attractive by LCV standards. The seating is comfy. Vision is generally good. It's got plenty of zip and it's quiet. It's the only one here to have a column mounted shifter and there are eco, normal and power drive modes. But even eco gives good acceleration and power is positively swift. As for gripes, well, let's say the LDV isn't totally without its foibles. There's no dead pedal for an idle left foot. There's no A-pillar grab handle on the driver's side to help you up into the cab. And changing the regenerative braking settings is fiddly because you've got to go in through the touchscreen. There's no power fold-in mirror function. And perhaps uh, what may prove most irritating for drivers is the fact that when you set off, you're sooner sold by a barrage of warning tones and alerts. Now you can customize the safety settings and you can turn those warning tones off, but it does default back to an on setting each time you start the vehicle. But our test van is barely noticing the weight out back and it's handling the bumps and bends just fine, albeit with a little bit more body roll than the others. The steering is light and easy and while there's a bit of road noise and boom from the load bay, I'm sure most drivers won't miss the constant droning of a diesel engine. The van category has evolved so much over the past decade and electrification is the next chapter. This LDV is, I think, a great preview of where the category is headed in the not too distant future. And jumping into the high ace is just like slipping on a pair of your favorite trainers. It's comfy, it's familiar, it's easy to drive, and everything just works. It's the torquiest of the three on paper and it feels it. There's no shortage of poke and the six-speeder does a good job too. But the Toyota is quite noisy when you plant your right foot. Its handling is really quite decent for an LCV and it's generally very composed. And we do like the dynamics that come with a rear drive format. The Toyota's steering has a bit more weight to it than the LDV, which I appreciate, and there's an honesty to the Toyota that I like too. It just gets the job done without fuss or fanfare. Because it's a bit lower than the others, the Hyundai is the easiest of the three to hop into, and the view from behind the wheel of this premium spec variant is really pretty classy for the category. You just feel cosseted in the Hyundai, it feels the most car-like of the three. It gets along just fine, but by the seat of the pants, it can't match the Toyota for go, and it's possibly edged out by the LDV. But the eight-speed auto is certainly a smooth operator, and in isolation, the Hyundai never feels like it's lacking. And like the Toyota in particular, it's nicely composed for an LCV. Body roll is adequately controlled, and with a bit of weight in the back, it handles road imperfections perfectly well. On the whole, the Hyundai is really nicely refined for a workhorse. With better engine and road noise suppression than the Toyota, very little in the way of vibration, and the best all-round vision of the bunch. As for range and efficiency, we covered 250 kilometres after a full charge in the LDV, with the trip computer still indicating a remaining range of 40 kilometres. We're confident that with purely urban use and no high-speed motorway work, this van should crack 300 kilometers without a worry. And we charged the battery from 10% to 80% in around 50 minutes at what turned out to be a fairly pricey ultra rapid charger. Charging at a capacity of 81 kilowatts, it cost us $48.29. Yes, utilizing high capacity public DC fast chargers can be costly, but smart businesses with their own charging infrastructure will utilize off-peak tariffs and overnight charging to lower charge costs appreciably, potentially enhanced by their own solar and battery storage. If the eDeliver 7's daily range suits your business requirements, applications like repeatable runs 
or where there is a known maximum daily mileage, the cost savings of electricity over diesel can quickly add up. Of course, telling the fuel usage for diesel is far simpler. On this test, our Toyota averaged 9.8 litres per 100 kilometres, while the Hyundai averaged 7.5 litres per 100 kilometres for safe working ranges of over 600 and 900 kilometres respectively. The medium van category is ripe for electrification and this LDV eDeliver 7 is part of an electric spearhead that will soon see more options reach our shores. But right now, in mid-2024, this model is the most affordable battery electric medium van in the market. Both the Toyota and the Hyundai are proven entities that work and work hard. But diesel is costly and fossil fuels won't help businesses trying to clean up their act. The LDV eDeliver 7, on the other hand, is also a genuinely capable workhorse. But it's a true pleasure to drive and it comes with plenty of handy features. However, with reduced servicing costs and service downtime, the potential for cost-effective charging and a decent factory warranty and backup, the LDV eDeliver 7 stacks up well for businesses keen to clean up their emissions and explore the potential of the electric transport transition. If that sounds like your business, this electric van is well worth further investigation. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know what you think of the LDV eDeliver 7 and electric vans in general in the comments below.